Since its inception, the Mini brand has grown tremendously. The number of models is multiplied, and the cars are getting bigger with each redesign. The Clubman, which joined the lineup in 2007, was created by adding nearly 10 inches of length to the Cooper hardtop and then installing a small rear door on one side and swapping out the Tiffin's liftgate for a pair of van style clamshell doors. The new, second generation Clubman goes a bit further, adding still more length and another rear door. And while the additional size may seem anathema to Mini's smaller Aspetta ethos, the Clubman is by far the best Mini in the lineup. A matter of inches the latest Clubman is 17.2 inches longer than a two-door Cooper hardtop and 10.9 inches longer than the four-door Cooper hardtop. It's also 2.9 inches wider. Every one of those inches matters. There's now space for four normal size front finished doors and four normal size adults and their cargo. The mini Ford door, by comparison, features stubby doors that open to a cramped cabin. Behind the two swinging doors at the back is an 18 cubic foot cargo hold, double the capacity of the hard top. Still, don't think for a minute that the Clubman is a large car, it's definitely not. At 168.3 inches long, the Clubman is only 0.8 inch longer than a Volkswagen Golf, and the fractionally smaller Golf actually has more rear seat room and significantly more cargo space. Equipped with the standard 1.5 litre three cylinder turbo engine, the Cooper Clubman starts at $24,950, but navigation, 17 inch wheels, a giant glass sunroof, an excellent six-speed automatic, and other odds and ends lifted the as-tested price of our example to $31,750. At that price, the Clubman rings in well above a commensurate Golf and rivals a loaded GTI. To some, Mini's distinctive interior and exterior styling will be worth their premium. To us, the Clubman sort of looks like a scale middle Ford Flex which we consider a good thing, although the distinctive rear doors create an annoying vision blocking seam in the rear view mirror. 3 for all Mini's turbocharged 3 cylinder is certainly no match for the Golf's 1.8 litre turbo 4 or the GTI's 2.0 litre turbo. Despite having 3199 pounds to lug, 435 pounds more than the standard Cooper, the engine remains pleasingly haughty, but it can't approach the smoothness of VW's Turbo 4s. With the 6-speed automatic, the little 3's 134 horsepower and 162 lbft of torque managed an 8.0 second run to 60 miles per hour in normal driving, the Clubman's torque gives it more than enough punch and the 6-speed clips off timely downshifts. While the thrust is pleasing, it's short-lived. The engine's power tapers off and the party starts drawing to a close at 4,500 revolutions per minute. The red line is 6,500 revolutions per minute, but there's no reason to rev this Turbo 3 that high. Most of the time it's best to keep the engine in its narrow, diesel-like power band between 2,000 and 4,500 revolutions per minute. The Clubman's fuel economy isn't very diesel-like, however. The EPA estimates that the Clubman will return 25 miles per gallon in the city, with the number rising to 34 miles per gallon on the highway. During our week with the Clubman, we averaged 27 miles per gallon. Like the regular Cooper, the Clubman has a spacious front seat in which a comfortable driving position can easily be attained and the steering wheel tilts and telescopes. A large round display placed in the center of the dashboard houses radio, navigation, and other functions. The speedometer lives in a small round gauge atop the steering column. With the rear doors and longer wheelbase, getting into the back seat doesn't require awkward contortions and there's additional legroom. Even on optional 17-inch wheels, 16 inches are standard, the Clubman has a firm but not abusive ride despite its run-flat tires. 
It's perhaps the smoothest striding mini of the modern era, possibly ever. The Clubman also is quiet inside. Wind and engine noise at 70 miles per hour measure a subdued 67 decibels, and even at full whack, the engine emits just 71 decibels of noise. Best of all, unlike the 189 horsepower Clubman S, the base version doesn't play phony engine sounds through the speakers. Despite the Clubman's extra size and weight, Mini has maintained the sharp steering and nimble responses for which the brand is known. It might be bigger, but the Clubman has an eagerness to turn corners that makes it feel small. We measured lateral acceleration at a so-so 0.83 grams, but the Mini is stable and secure up to that limit. Exceed it, and the Mini understeers until you slow the pace. And, while it shrinks on interesting roads, on the highway it exhibits the straight-eyed stability of a larger car. As a result of our experience with the long-term Mini Cooper S, which has required numerous repairs, we're hesitant to recommend any Mini. But the Clubman is easily the best car in the brand's lineup. It's still not too big, offers entertaining handling, looks great, and the ride won't bruise your kidneys. It's expensive. But if style and driving dynamics are worth the extra bucks to you, and you can't be talked into a Mazda 3 or a VW Golf, then the Mini Club could be for you, man.